Hello everyone. Today we're going to be writing a spell checker program in Python. Now here's a description of the program. So we're going to have it take two file names as parameters. We're going to prompt the user to enter two file names. One is going to be a dictionary file which contains uh, a, a universal list of all the words that are available in our language and a text file. Uh, the program is then going to display as output all the words in the text file that are not in the dictionary file. In other words, that means that it's going to display all of the words that are misspelled. Now this program specifically is going to uh, utilize functions. So we're going to have a requirement to use uh, at least these five functions that are listed. The main function, a function called read dictionary file, uh, which is going to return a list of all the words that are in the dictionary in that file. Uh, read text file, which is going to return a list of all the words that are in the text file. But a little bit more than that, we're also going to strip away all the punctuation and we're going to convert all the words to lowercase so that we can match them against the file, the names, I'm sorry, the words that are in the dictionary file. Uh, another function we're going to have is called find errors. That is going to take the list of words from the dictionary uh, as well as the list of words from the text file and do a comparison to see which words uh, are not in the dictionary that were in the text file. And that then is going to tell us which ones were misspelled. That's going to return a list back to us that we can then pass into a function print errors, and that will just print out all of the words that were misspelled. Here's a sample output of our spell checker program. Um, I've bolded the user input, so first it's going to say, Welcome to the spell checker. Please enter the dictionary file. And then the user is going to type the name of the dictionary file. It's then going to say, Enter the text file. And you see that I've entered passage.txt. Uh, that's at that, at that point is when all the processing is going to take place. And then it's going to print out the misspelled words are. And then in this example, there are four misspelled words. Okay, let's get started now. Uh, I've opened up PyCharm, and now let's create a new project. So I'm going to go up to File and say New Project. And I'm going to call this project Spell Checker. And let's open it in this window. Okay, so it's creating my virtual environment right now, and it'll finish in just a second here. All right, there we go. And now I'm going to create one Python file inside of it. So I'm going to right click on the name of the project, go to new, say Python file, and let's call it spellchecker.py. And that'll get us to the point here of being able to type our Python code. I'm going to add a comment up here at the top just telling us exactly what we're doing. And we're going to create a spell checker with functions. Okay, now there were a few functions that we uh, needed to include. In our, in our program. So I'm going to just create the skeleton for those, which is going to be the signature of the function, but with no body, just so that we know these are the functions that we need to use. Um, so first of all, we're going to have our main function. And um, don't forget that you need to call main also. Now this keyword pass, if you're unfamiliar with that, this is a word in Python that just allows us to have something empty like the body of a function or the body of an if statement or a while loop. Um, if we're not going to have anything in it, Python doesn't let us just leave it blank. We have to have the word pass. We're going to come back and replace that. We're not going to leave that word pass there. Uh, so we'll come back and replace that in uh, a little bit. The other functions that we needed to have by convention, we're going to put the functions all above main. Main will be at the bottom of our file. So we'll put the other ones above that. We have one called read 
uh, dictionary file, and that's going to take the oops, the name of the dictionary file. Another one we have is called read text file, and that's going to take the name of the text file. We have one find errors, and that's going to take two lists. I'm going to call it the dictionary words and the text words. And the last function we needed to have was called print errors, and that's going to take a list of all the errors. I'm going to have that keyword pass inside all those functions right now. So your code should compile. If you were to run it right now, nothing is going to happen though. We're going to replace all of those words pass in just a few minutes as we're writing each one of those functions though. Now, if, we re if you remember what the uh, output of the code was supposed to be, so let me show you that here again. Here's our sample output. It starts off by saying, welcome to the spell checker. Please enter the dictionary file. Please enter the text file. So let's go ahead and get that set up. So welcome to the spell checker is just going to be a print statement. So in our main function, we'll just say, welcome to the spell checker. And then we're going to read the name of the dictionary uh, file. So we'll call it the dictionary file is going to be uh, retrieved from the input function. Please enter the dictionary file. Now that's going to prompt the user to enter the name of the dictionary file. Uh, and then that value is going to go into uh, that variable that I've created there called dictionary file. Okay, next we're going to have our text file. Where we say, please enter the text file. And again, it's going to prompt the user and it's going to go into that variable that I have named text file. Okay, now at this point is where we start doing the processing because the next thing that was output was the misspelled words are. Now we're not able to get all of the misspelled words until we've read all of the words from the dictionary file, we've read all the words from the text file, we've called that find errors function to find all of the words from the text file that are not in the dictionary file, and then we can print out all the errors. So we have a little bit of processing to do before we get to that point of printing out the errors. So what we're going to do next is we're going to um, read all of the words from the dictionary file. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to call that function that we've created up there. Uh, it's on my line number five, read dictionary file, and it takes the name of a, uh, of a file, the name of the dictionary file. Well, fortunately, this is what we have prompted the user to enter already. So we're just going to call that function, and it's going to read all the words from the dictionary file and return it as a list into that dictionary list variable. Now we're going to do the same thing. I'll go ahead and add the next line also, even before we write those functions out. Now we're going to do the same thing with the text file. So we're going to call the read text file and pass in that text file name into that function. Now at this point, what we've got is both lists from those files, the dictionary list and the text list. So now we can find all of the errors that exist and throw that into another list variable. And that's just going to be found by calling that find errors function and passing the list, the dictionary list, and the text list into that function. And then the last step, the last thing we're going to need inside of our main function is to take that uh, error list that we've got and pass it into the print errors function. So you see that the functions that we were required to write in this program, are be the reason for that is because we're going through uh, the steps, the algorithm that we would have to actually perform the spell checking and just breaking them down into smaller pieces of functionality. So that's actually going to wrap up the main function. There's nothing else that we're going to need there. The print errors function will print out the misspelled words are and then print out each of the words that are inside that error list. So uh, let's go ahead and jump up to our first function, the read dictionary file. Now the read dictionary file need, takes as parameter the name of a file which represents a dictionary. 
Now you may not have a file on your computer right now that represents a dictionary, but fortunately I've got one for you. So what I want you to do is open up a browser and go to uh, a site summercamps.usc.edu slash dictionary.txt. Now I've posted for you already uh, a dictionary file. Now there are a lot of words in this file. You see that they're arranged based on order uh, or sorry, length and then alphabetically. Uh, and so there are a lot of words if you go through there. As we get down to the bottom, there's words there that, um, gosh, I don't know. I don't even know what all of them mean. Uh, but this is a dictionary file. So it's got all the words or uh, a, probably a good majority of the words that we have available to us in the English language. So what I want you to do is I want you to go there Pull up all the words again, summer camps, plural, dot usc, dot edu, slash dictionary, dot txt. Now what we need to do is we need to take that file and we need to get that file into our project so that we can then read from the file. With File.io, the easiest way to read from a file is if it's in the directory of your project. So here's what I want you to do. Let's open up our project directory. So go back into PyCharm for a second here. And I want you to right click on spellchecker.py on the left in your project um, uh, menu there. And then there is an option over here that says show in Explorer. Now, I, if for those of you who are using Mac or Linux, it may say something a little bit different than that, like show in Finder, something like that. When you click that, what it's going to do is it's going to open up for you the directory that contains that file. Now, this is exactly where we want to put that file. So in here, I'm going to create a new text document that I'm going to call dictionary.txt. Now I'm going to open that file up. It's blank right now. And then go to um, my dictionary file from the website. I'm going to copy everything. So hitting Control A in Windows, um, Command A in Mac should highlight everything. I'm going to copy it, Control C or Command C. Go over to your file, paste it all, Control V or Command V. Save that file, and now you've got that whole dictionary file um, inside of your directory. Okay, the next step is I want you to go to the same site and go to summercamps.usc.edu slash passage.txt, P-A-S-S-A-G-E dot txt. This is just a sample text file that I have created. It has a few misspelled words in it. We're going to do the same thing. So inside of our directory that contains our Python file, we're going to create a new text document. I'm going to call mine passage.txt. Open it up, copy everything from that web file paste it in there and save it. So now I've got passage.txt and spellchecker. I'm sorry, uh, dictionary.txt both as files in the same directory that contains my Python file. That's going to make it easier for me to read. When I open up a file for reading inside my Python file, it's going to be opening it from uh, first of all, a, a relative directory, which is the current directory. This doesn't mean that we can't read files from other directories on our computer. It just makes it a little easier if it's in the same directory. All we do is specify the name of the file. That we don't need to specify the entire directory of where the file is located as well. So it's just a little convenience that we've got there. Okay, let's go back to our Python file now and we have our read dictionary file. So in here what we're going to do is everything ultimately needs to go into uh, a list variable because that's what's being returned from this function. So I'm going to create a list, an empty list, dictionary words. This is where we're going to put everything, each one of those words from that file. Now you notice that each word in that file was on a separate line. That makes it a little convenient for us that all we need to do is go line by line through the file and read each of the words uh, from those lines. Now to be able to do this we need to open up our file for reading. So what we're going to do is create an input file variable and there is a function called open in Python which takes the name of a file 
the name of our file is dictionary file name and then it takes a second parameter which is how we want to open it up the mode we're going to open this one up for reading only so we're going to put an r inside quotation marks this would change if you wanted to open the file for writing or appending you could pass a w or an a if you wanted to open it uh, as a binary file for reading or writing maybe it was an image or a video you would have a RB if you were opening a binary file for reading or a WB if you were opening a binary file for writing. Uh, you can also open files for both reading and writing using a plus sign. So that's another way that you can do it. For now though, we're only interested in opening this file for reading, so I'm going to put an R. Uh, it's a string variable also, so it's inside the double quotation marks. Now what I need to do is iterate through each line inside this file. Well, fortunately, we can iterate through each line in the file using a for loop. We have the keyword for followed by a variable name. I'm going to call it line. And this is going to be for each line inside our input file. Okay, now, when I get inside my for loop, the first time I get into my loop, the line variable is going to contain the first line from the file. The second time through, it's going to contain the second line from the file. So if I go back and I take a look at my dictionary file, the very first time, line is going to be equal to the string A. The second time through my for loop, line is going to be equal to the string I. The third time through my for loop, line is going to be equal to the string AD, and so on. And it's going to continue in the for loop, iterating through every line that I have inside my dictionary file. Now on each line, what I want to do um, is I want to make sure that I don't have any um, leading or trailing white space. Just in case the word was a space on that line, I want to make sure that I get rid of the space. I want to also get rid of the new line because the new line is also going to come back to us and every one of those words has a new line character at the end. So I want to get rid of that also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip all the white space from the beginning and the end. Now, if the file is formatted in a way that there's not going to be any white space at the beginning of the word, but there's definitely going to be at least a new line at the end of the word. That's going to get rid of it, so now we're looking solely at the word with no spaces, tabs, or new line characters attached at the beginning or the end. Then we can uh, append that word to our list. Uh, dictionary words is what I called my list. So we can append it there. Now by the time that I exit my for loop, I now have read through every word that's in that file and I've added it into that dictionary words list that I created. So now I want to close my input file and the last step is we're going to return that list from the function. And that's going to wrap up our read dictionary file function. If you want to check it out and make sure that it worked properly, let's go down to our main function. And right after we enter the name of the dictionary file, why don't we just, um, oops, sorry, not there. Right after we've read the dictionary file, why don't we just print out the dictionary list and see what we get. So I'm going to print dictionary list. Let's go ahead and run our program. So I go up to run, click the run dot dot dot, click on spell checker. And let's enter the name of our dictionary file, which we call ours dictionary.txt. The text file, we haven't done anything with this yet, so you can actually enter anything at all there. It doesn't even matter if the file exists or not because we haven't done anything with that text file variable. And then what you see is you should see uh, a whole bunch of different words right there printed out in our list. Now, there are so many words that are part of that list that um, you see how they're all added into it there. We're missing some from the beginning, and that's just because of the limitation of the print function of how much it's able to take at one time as a parameter. If you want to make sure that your first word made it in there, let's just print out the value of the first one. So if I run it again, you'll notice here that my first word printed out is A. 
So it is actually getting everything. There's just so many words inside that list that the print function can't print them all at the same time. So dictionary list sub zero, the first element, is the, is the word A. If I were to do the second one, if you look back at that file, it would be the letter I. So let's try one more just to make sure that we're reading everything correctly. And you see there is I. So the word I is the second one that's printed out. So that shows that we are uh, reading the dictionary file. So our next step, let's take a look here at our read text file function. Now our read text file function is going to do something very similar to the read dictionary file, but there's one difference and that's the formatting of the file. That in the read text file, the file is formatted instead uh, as sentences or even paragraphs. And so we're going to have to read line by line through the file, but then we're going to have to split on spaces so that we can get each word. Okay, so inside of our read text file, let's start off by creating our words list. That's what's going to be ultimately returned from the function. We need the input file. This time we're going to be opening the text file name for reading. And we're again going to be iterating through line by line through the file. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to, um, um, we want to try to, first of all, we're going to separate this out into um, each one of the words that's on the line. So let's see, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to name a new variable words on line. And this is going to be a list of all the words that are on the line. So I'm going to strip the line first, get rid of any leading and trailing white space. Now keep in mind the strip function is not going to get rid of any spaces in the middle. However, we do have another function which is split. Now the default behavior of the split function is to split the string on spaces. And that's going to separate it out and return to us a list that contains all of the words that are on that line separated using the delimiter of the space character. So what we're going to end up with in that words on line variable is all the words on that line separated out where words on line at index 0 is going to be the first word. Words on line at index 1 will be the second word. So if we take a look at our passage.txt for example the first line is here. So the first time I get through my for loop, I'm going to be looking at this line. Programming in Python is awesome. I want to program every day. Now, words on line is going to contain all of that that I have highlighted, but it's going to have it separated out since I split on it. So words on line sub zero is going to have programming, not with the space. Words on line sub 1 is going to have n. Words on line sub 2 is going to have Python. Okay, so it separated it out. So first of all, we got rid of the new line characters, the leading and trailing white space with the strip function. Then the split function separates all the words into uh, a list. And that's the words on line. So that's going to be a list that we now have. So now what we want to do is we want to iterate through each word in that new list, that words on line. Okay. And now for each one of the words on that line, we are going to append it to our words list, what's going to be returned. Now I want to do one more thing here though, is I want to make sure that I strip off all the punctuation. Because if I have a punctuation mark, so if I pull this back up like here, this is what's going to be returned uh, in this example for the word awesome. It's going to be awesome, obviously spelled incorrectly, but it's going to include the exclamation mark. I don't want to include any punctuation marks. So what I want to do is strip off the punctuation marks. Well, there is one version of the strip function that takes uh, a set of characters that you want to strip off. So I can include a whole set of characters, and this is going to strip all of them off. So what I'm saying here is get rid of any, uh, uh, get rid of any 
uh, periods, commas, exclamation marks, uh, quotation marks. Note that I have to escape that. So I'm not saying the backslash. I'm saying the quotation mark since that's an escape character. Colon, semicolon, question mark. Those are all going to be stripped off so that I don't have them attached to the word. And then last, I want to make this lowercase. That was one of the requirements that we had uh, for this project. Make it all lowercase so we can compare it to the lowercase words that are in that dictionary file. Okay. Now that has appended them all into that words list. So now outside both those four loops, we don't need our input file anymore. We can close that. Very important with file I.O., with reading or writing. Make sure that you always close the file after you're done using it. Um, when you open a file, you're holding on to it. You're holding on to what's called a lock on the file, and the operating system is not going to allow any other program to go in and modify that file as long as you have it open. So you want to close it so that you don't have that problem. I'm sure many of you have seen when you open files before, occasionally you open it up and, and the program will say, this file is being opened read only because it's open in another program. So when we close the file is the way that we can make sure that that message is not going to come up when we open it in another program. And our last step, let's return our words list, which contains now all the words from our text file. Um, we've separated them on spaces, so we split them on that. We stripped out all of the quotation marks, uh, I'm sorry, the punctuation marks also. So we're left just with the words and we made them all lowercase as well so that we can compare them now to the words that are in the dictionary file. So that takes us now to our next function, our find errors function. Now you notice our find errors function is taking two parameters, the list of words from the dictionary and the list of words from our text file. And what we want to do is we just want to return a list of what words from the text file don't exist in the dictionary file. So uh, we'll create a, uh, a list that I'm going to call misspelled words. We'll iterate through each word from our text file, and we just want to check to see if it's inside the dictionary words, or more specifically, we want to check to see if it's not inside the dictionary words. And if it's not, we are going to append it to our misspelled words, and then return our misspelled words. So that's now going to contain all the misspelled words from our text file. And the way we know they're misspelled is because they don't exist in our dictionary file. Last step, and we're going to be able to wrap this program up and test it out, is our print errors function. So in here, we need to print the misspelled words are. That was the first thing that got printed, followed by a new line. And now we need to iterate through all the words in our error list and just print them out. Okay, so we've got now our program where we print out welcome to the spell checker. We read the name of the dictionary file, we read the name of the text file. We then go through the dictionary file and read all the words into our dictionary list variable here in our main function. We read all the words from our text file into our text list variable in our main function. We then find all the errors, so any word that doesn't exist in our dictionary list that is in our text list is going to come back in this error list variable, and then we print out all of the words in our error list. So let's go ahead and give it a shot now. So I'm going to run my program again. My dictionary file, dictionary.txt, my text file I call passage.txt. It prints out all my misspelled words, awesome, to, program, continue, programming, enough, professional, and heard. So you see those are all the misspelled words. If we pull back up our passage.txt, you can see those are the words that are misspelled. Uh, in this. Now this is kind of cool. You can try this out. Try changing things around in here. See if it's still going to work. So let's change Python and make it Python. Save this and let's run our program again. Specifying dictionary.txt and passage.txt and you should now see 
python, python comes up now as a misspelled word as well. And that's because it doesn't exist inside our dictionary file. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed this. I know that I may have gone a little bit fast as I was writing this code, so uh, hopefully you were able to pause it, go back, watch this again, uh, and you're able to write your own spell checker in Python using file IO, specifically file reading, um, some for loops that we have in here. We have an if statement as well, and separating this out nicely into functions.